first of all, I will take uh, one small minute uh, from my uh, presentation to uh, to thank deeply thank to the organizers of this uh, conference, so Catherine, Christophe, and Mathieu, and all, all the team that is here. So I'd like to to tell you that the local organization is just perfect. It's like for a for a real conference. So we have uh, I don't know if you see my my real badges. You, we have signs all over the campus, so a real registration, not a virtual registration. So just just perfect, and it is not finished. So as you may see, the the hybrid version of the the conference is is going very well. I'd like also to to thank uh, Emmanuel and uh, and uh, Quentin for the selection of the of the um, uh, for running the committee for the um, uh, computer science part and again again uh, um, Catherine Mathieu uh, uh, and Christophe for uh, running the the local organization and uh, the selection of papers for the economical part and to all the team that is here in the room you don't see them, so I will not touch the camera, but uh, at some point we'll turn the, the camera to them and ask them to um, to come here and to have your uh, your 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 clap. And I also would like to to thank all the people that uh, join us. So uh, as far as I understood, we are 143. Uh, and uh, this morning we are more than uh, 70 people. Uh, uh, registered to uh, to Zoom. Um, um, I will I will start my talk now. So so please count the minutes uh, that I speak on the on, on my talk. Um, so my talk is on fairness in committee based uh, blockchain, and actually all the credit goes to Yakoli. This is the the a <laughs> uh, uh, big part of his uh, his thesis. And this is a joint work with Antonella Del Pozzo from CIA uh, and Sara Tucci Pier Giovanni from CIA uh, list as well. So um, I will start my talk uh, telling you what the users uh, imagine about the blockchain. So they imagine that uh, I have a distributed ledger. There is no central authority. Uh, the distributed ledger is secure. Uh, this means that uh, actually the written information is not erased. Uh, the information is available, and uh, um, the most important thing that the pri privacy is preserved. So, what uh, clients uh, imagine about the blockchain is that I have a, a unique chain uh, of blocks. Actually, what happens in the in the reality is that. You may not have a unique chain like in uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, or even worse, uh, in IOTA, there is no uh, chain at all. There is a, a DAG of transactions, and transactions are added to, to, to this DAG. And um, um, at, at the, let's say, at the end of the DAG, so it's an evolving, uh, evolving uh, direct, uh, directed acyclic uh, graph. Well, um, let's take a close look to Bitcoin. So I will uh, follow the, uh, the the line of talks that uh, uh, presented uh, before. So uh, in Bitcoin, you have uh, clients that send transaction to some bakers. Uh, bakers uh, will solve some proof of work, and uh, the the one that solved the proof of work will, uh, will uh, uh, generate a new block and the new block is propagating in the, in the network. And uh, all the uh, bakers uh, that are connected to, to the network will add the, this, uh, this new red block to the longest chain. So they view uh, of, the, of, the, of the blockchain. So what are the guarantees that Bitcoin offers in terms of uh, consistency is the fact that we'll have an agreement on the common prefix, uh, not the whole uh, blockchain. And actually what we have proof 
approved in a previous uh, work published last year with Emmanuel, uh, Romaric, Antonella, and Sarah, is the fact that uh, the consensus abstraction is necessary in order to ensure a strong, uh, consistent uh, blockchain, meaning to have a unique uh, chain uh, that is a unique view on a unique chain that is viewed by all the uh, all the participants in the network. And uh, here comes uh, again the presentation of this consensus abstraction that is a very, very, it's a fundamental abstraction in distributed systems. So uh, consensus um, is defined by four properties. Uh, agreement, so uh, meaning that if if uh, if a correct uh, baker or um, or miner uh, decides a block B, then eventually all correct miners uh, will decide the same block. Validity, a decided block, um, satisfies some validity predicate, so it is well chained with the previous block. Uh, integrity, that means that no correct baker decides twice, and termination means that every uh, correct baker eventually decides, so we'll not have bakers that uh, forget to, uh, to decide. So only if all these four conditions are satisfied uh, by um, an abstraction that implements this, uh, uh, this consensus, we can say that uh, we uh, are sure that uh, each uh, produced block will be correctly added to, to the existing blockchain. Okay, so uh, there is a problem. So uh, the problems come from some impossibility results that have been, uh, so there are common knowledge in, in distributed systems, meaning that it is impossible to solve consensus in asynchronous environments, even if there is uh, only one uh, faulty process, a process that crashes. So uh, here I cited uh, Fisher, Lynch and Patterson result, uh, the, the journal version that uh, has been published in 85. So very well known result. Uh, this brings us into uh, almost deadlock because uh, that point meaning, okay, consensus is impossible. But what is important to, to notice here is that um, uh, there are some conditions uh, in this result. The first, uh, well, the first condition is the fact that the system is asynchronous. So you cannot put bounds in the communication delays, okay? So the second point uh, that uh, uh, that uh, comes into the mind to the people that uh, construct blockchain based on this uh, consensus abstraction uh, is the fact that the, the participant to the consensus um, uh, have to be known, which is not the case for all the, the blockchains, but the ones that are based on the on the committees use this uh, this uh, this assumption. So the participants uh, to the to the committee, the the, the, the committee that will generate a block, uh, are known, and do not change uh, with the time. Uh, do not change during uh, the the consensus run, the consensus process. Okay, which is uh, a small problem in the blockchain, as we'll see uh, a little bit uh, later. Okay, so in order to fix the, um, the impossibility result uh, that we saw previously, there were some, um, so people invented consensus uh, protocols uh, under, the, under the restriction uh, uh, on the execution environment. So instead of considering asynchronous environments, we consider slightly uh, weaker environments like uh, synchronous or uh, pseudo-synchronous, or uh, people went to uh, probabilistic guarantees, okay? Uh, in order to fix the, the, the second problem that, uh, that I evoked previously, um, uh, people considered uh, fixed uh, committees uh, for each uh, block. 
uh, fixed committee will uh, introduce uh, some problems. And actually, the, the problems come from another uh, abstraction that uh, is implemented, um, that is uh, uh, an underlying abstraction on a, of the block committee-based blockchain, uh, which is called repeated consensus. So in repeated consensus, what we try to do is to character, characterize actually the properties that we want from, from the whole uh, chain of blocks. So what, what the repeated consensus um, says that, um, first of all, we have to guarantee that uh, every uh, obedient participant, and the Akole already defined the notion of uh, obedient participant, has an infinite output, so does not stop in the middle of the computation. The second property is the agreement, meaning that if I take, if I analyze the, the blockchain of each, the output of each uh, participant, and if I take the E output, E output, of one uh, obedient uh, participant, then this E output should be equal to the E output of another obedient participant. And finally, the validity is the same as the, in the, the consensus abstraction, meaning that uh, each block that is in the blockchain of any obedient participant has to satisfy, the, uh, satisfy a validity uh, predicate. Okay, so, um, well, there are some problems with the committee-based blockchain uh, that have to be solved. Uh, so committee-based blockchain uh, are, uh, so the fact that we use consensus or repeated consensus that were uh, problems that have been already covered by 20 years of research in, in distributed system does not solve uh, the te technical problems in, in blockchain. So one of the problems that comes with the blockchain area is, uh, is the fact that um, we have to be very careful uh, in the way we select committees in order to avoid the oligarchy uh, problems. So the idea is that I, I, I select a committee, uh, the way I select this committee, if the, the committee that introduced blocks in the blockchain will be the same. Uh, the same people will be rewarded. The same people will will uh, influence the, the 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 way the blockchain uh, is constructed. So it's it's a it's a hard problem to solve. Another point uh, is um, is the rewarding uh, the committee rewarding. How to reward the committee and when to uh, to reward the, the committee. And uh, again, this is a, a hard problem to, uh, to solve in blockchain. And most of the committee-based blockchains um, evoke to these problems, but do not propose, um, how to say, a standalone solution for none of these, uh, these problems. So, uh, so um, what, uh, we wanted to study is the fact that, okay, uh, we have these two mechanisms. So we identify these two mechanisms, selection and, and, uh, uh, and rewarding. And now in order to avoid the problems that, that uh, arise from selection and rewarding, we, we think that uh, actually these problems can be solved by studying the fairness in the, in the committee-based uh, blockchains. And intuitively, the fairness in blockchain can be, uh, so the common, let's say, the common knowledge, uh, the common, uh, yeah, the, 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 I would say a definition from the, from the uh, literature uh, uh, of fairness would, would, uh, would, uh, adapted to the blockchain will, will state that any obedient participant having a, a fraction alpha of the total merit uh, in the system gets at least a fraction alpha of the total reward. So this would be a very common sense uh, uh, definition. 
Well, uh, if I uh, if I look now to the to the way the, the fairness have has been considered in blockchain, so the 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 the, the work that uh, was closest to uh, uh, to analyzing the, the fairness in the way we uh, we felt that it should be analyzed is the work of uh, Gary. Uh, in his uh, Bitcoin backbone protocol, and he introduced the notion of, uh, of uh, chain quality. But this notion of chain quality was very, very proper to the way Bitcoin is, is uh, functioning, and uh, because it considers the number of blocks a, a participant will add to the blockchain. And uh, this comes with, uh, with the Two problems in in the, the um, if we want to apply exactly the same analysis to the committee-based blockchain, so first of all, um, uh, this way of characterizing the blockchain uh, does not uh, uh, does not uh, cover the way the committees are selected in the committee-based blockchain, and the second problem uh, is the fact that. Producing a block in the committee-based blockchain uh, is a cooperative work, while in Bitcoin is a more standalone uh, process. So I solve my proof of work, and then I, I introduce my block uh, in the uh, blockchain, while in the committee-based blockchain, we agree, we are a committee, we agree on the way the, the block will be added to the, to the blockchain. Okay. So uh, now, because uh, we are told, all of us convinced that we have to to, uh, uh, to 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 deal with two different mechanisms in the committee-based blockchain: the selection mechanism and the rewarding mechanism. So what we wanted to do is to have an analysis to propose actually definition for the fairness in the way the the, the committee uh, selection is done and uh, the fairness in the way the, the, the participants are uh, rewarded. So intuitively, um, a committee selection mechanism is said to be fair if each participant becomes member proportional to its merit. So I will not formalize the merit right now. So assume that there is some uh, indicator that gives for each participate in the system, a numerical value that corresponds to, uh, corresponds to the merit. And in terms of uh, fairness of the rewarding mechanism, what intuitively what we would like to have is that if I, if I analyze my blockchain for each level, for each height in the, in the, in the blockchain, only the obedient uh, committee members will be uh, rewarded, meaning only those that uh, uh, actively participated to the, to the, uh, uh, to the generation of, of a block uh, for a, a particular height will be rewarded. So please uh, make a sign. Okay, if, uh, if uh, so if I have one minute left. Yes, you can. Yes, you have uh, five five minutes more. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, for the fairness of the committee selection, actually, uh, we came out with two properties. Uh, for the first property says that each participant with a positive merit uh, should become a committee member infinitely open. So, the key word here is the infinitely open. And uh, the second common sense property is the fact that a participant that has a low merit should not be selected more often than a participant with a, a higher merit. Okay, and uh, if uh, we analyze three uh, different types of uh, uh, selection mechanism uh, that we can find, um, we can think of, uh, if I take, uh, if I select uh, participants uh, in the system that have a higher stake, uh, then we can prove that uh, this mechanism is not fair. And actually, this brings me to the oligarchy problem that I evoked previously. If I select um, people that have lower stake in the system, 
the, and I reward them, this uh, mechanism will be uh, will um, verify the fairness definition that I uh, give previously. And uh, again, another simple mechanism that uh, is used uh, generally in a distributed system and in system in general, the round robin uh, mechanism is again fair. So meaning that I will select each uh, people in the system uh, in, in a round robin uh, way. Okay. So uh, in terms of uh, rewarding, um, uh, so we came out with, uh, with um, inspired by uh, previous work in, in failure detectors, uh, we came out with, um, with the characterization of uh, rewarding um, parameter for a process, for a participant, for a specific uh, level in the in the blockchain, and we say that this rewarding parameter has to have uh, three properties: um, age precision, age being the height uh, that I am focused on. Yeah. So uh, age precision says that uh, if a process is not uh, a committee member for this height, this uh, his reward has to be zero. Uh, age completeness, meaning that if I is a committee member for, a, for the height age and uh, I is obedient, then its rewarding has to be one. And the third uh, property that is accuracy says that uh, if uh, a process is a committee member for high and it's not uh, uh, obedient, so does not follow his uh, protocol, the, the agreement protocol, then his reward has to be zero. Okay, and um, now the, the fairness uh, of rewarding mechanism, uh, so we, we came out to with uh, two definition of the fairness, uh, a strong definition that says that uh, we say that uh, a rewarding mechanism is fair if um, uh, for all levels, age levels, yeah. So uh, the mechanism satisfies for each each participant, age precision, completeness, and accuracy. The three properties that I announced uh, uh, earlier. And what we saw is that uh, if we apply this definition. Uh, actually, we came uh, quickly with uh, with uh, impossibility results. So we weaker the definition. So we came out with eventually fairness that says that there exists a level high, H H H zero, uh, such that for all the levels that are uh, greater than H is the zero, uh, if the mechanism is uh, if the mechanism uh, satisfies the three condition, uh, precision, completeness, and accuracy, then the mechanism is, um, is fair. Now, uh, some uh, results. So I mark as theorem. The formalization is in the paper. And the accolade is here to give you uh, the proof of, on the blackboard. So uh, we have a whiteboard here. Yeah, so uh, the theorem says that there is a fair uh, reward uh, mechanism in committee-based blockchain if and only if uh, the system is synchronous. So meaning that I have a known uh, bounded delay on the uh, message propagation. And uh, another result that says that there exists an eventual fair reward mechanism in a committee-based blockchain if and only if the system is synchronous or eventually synchronous and uh, the Byzantine participants, so those that are allowed to not follow the, 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 the protocol to uh, send uh, messages, uh, different messages to different uh, participants. Uh, so if these uh, Byzantine nodes uh, are detectable, which is a very hard problem in distributed systems. And uh, a quick case study, Tendermint. So for the rewarding in, in, in Tendermint, uh, so why Tendermint? Because it's the only one that evoked in the white papers, the fact that we, we can uh, think to a way of selecting committees in order to construct the, the, the blockchain. 
So in Tendermin, what happens is that uh, once a new block is decided for a specific uh, height of the of uh, of the blockchain, so the participant will uh, the participants will collect the the decision of the other uh, participants uh, of the committee members, yeah, uh, for that particular height, and uh, will construct a set that is called the set to to be rewarded. And during the the consensus process for a specific height, so processes will also the committee members will also propose to. Uh, to reward the, 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 the members of the committee that constructed the block for the height uh, age minus one. Okay, so what we prove is that in an eventual synchronous system, uh, the reward mechanism of Tendermint as it was proposed by Tendermint is, is not even eventually fair, which is weaker than, than fair. And uh, actually, by uh, modifying uh, slightly the Tendermint uh, mechanism, uh, introducing modulable timeouts and timeouts and the detection of Byzantine participants, then we come with an eventual uh, fair uh, uh, rewarding mechanism. Oh, so this work opens a lot, a lot of uh, research directions, more than we could have uh, solved. And uh, as you could see for the selection mechanism, practically we don't have any uh, specific result. So we focused only on the rewarding. So this has to, has to be done. Um, another important uh, research direction would be the analysis of fairness of different other uh, blockchains like uh, uh, Algorand, Ouroboros, which are not committee-based, or IOTA, which is not committee-based, so our analysis does not fit with this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of blockchains. And maybe for people that are in distributed system, so one big problem that is still, has still to be solved here is uh, how to detect Byzantine behavior in, in blockchain. So we don't know how to do it, but uh, by um, using the past of the, 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 the past uh, uh, exchange in between nodes, the, the, the history of, uh, of messages exchange. So maybe we'll be able to come out with, uh, with uh, nice uh, Byzantine behavior detectors. So this closes my talk. So I will be happy to, uh, to answer to your questions.